Oh, you're a bit of a rock groupie, aren't you, Kerry, I am. If, if truth be known? Well, in 1977, I'd met Charles Benson with Rod Marsh, and we played golf at Sunningdale and um, with Robert Sangster. Right. And <laughs> is that enough name drop? Well, not quite. If I would man manage, <laughs> manage another couple, if you like. But I'll he hadn't told me anything about this. He said, meet you for golf at 7 a.m. after breakfast. And we got picked up in two chauffeur-driven roles. Right. And I said, who are we playing with? You knew it'd be something special, presumably. Mm -hmm. Goes McGrath, butcher forward, plays up to mid off, and there's no run. And he said to me, uh, "We're playing with Robert Sangster," and I didn't quite know who he was. I said, "And as we jumped into the roles, I said, what, what, what is it?" He? he said, "Pools." So, in the roles we start, I said, "I guess you don't install many, you know. I guess you install a lot of heated stuff here in London." You didn't. <laughs> I did. <laughs> And he said, I beg your pardon. Uh, anyway, I didn't know it was Vernon's Pools, OK? No. I'm a boy from the Burbs. <laughs> Here's McGrath, and Butcher wants a run there, pushing in the offside. War comes in, throws at the stumps at the far end, misses. And Butcher, I think, was already in his ground, and he's one takes England to 24 for one in reply to Australia's 551 for six declared. Anyway, we played around at Sunnydale and drank sangria after the match. Uh, Marsh and Sangster got the better of Benson and me. Anyway, four years later, I'm in England, and I meet Charles again for the Jubilee Test at Lord's. Oh, right, yeah. And I'm meeting Charles under the Father Time Bar at 11 o'clock for a couple of pints. But as we walk in, there's Mick Jagger and his dad, Bill. Hmm. So he said, would you like to meet Jagger? I went, <laughs> <laughs> not many, Benny. <laughs> anyway, he introduces me, and he has to go away. So there's Mick and me. Oh, right. And over three or four pints with his dad. You and sort I'm of warmed him up, did you? And and he knew who I was. He said, you know, you're the old leggy, aren't you? I said, yeah, I am. You're the old rocker. <laughs> anyway. At least he's still going. Yeah. Anyway, as we're drinking away, he says, look, I'm injured at the moment and I'm playing my neighbouring village tomorrow. Would you like to deputise? I said, no problems, Mick. Then Charles comes down and said, Robert's invited you two into his private box oh. above Father Time. Um, and I said, me? He said, yeah, and Mick. So we brushed Bill, Mick's dad, and we all waltzed up into the box for lunch. But we'd only been there five minutes and the phone rang, and it was the MCC. And they said, uh, Mr Sangster... It's Walsh Gillespie coming round the wicket, and uh, Butcher will have one here, I think, pushing away to extra cover. 25 for one. You've got a person of ill repute in the box, and mm. everybody thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> but they said, it's, it's Mr Jagger. It, we, we really would prefer if he wasn't in the box. Really? Yeah, so Robert had to say, I'm sorry, Mick, but it's been requested you leave. And they looked at me, and I said, well, if Mick's off, I'm off. <laughs> being best mates. Yeah, absolutely. Had so to. we went back into Father Time downstairs and drank two or three more pints. Anyway, he said, you're right for tomorrow, I'll get you picked up. Here comes Gillespie again from the southern end and uh, Triscothic this time. Plays no stroke. So at midday, a chauffeur-driven Jack pulls up outside my hotel and takes me to his village and I play as the pro. In the middle of the afternoon, Mick and Jerry, oh Paul, right, oh right. <laughs> they come to the ground and sit at cover on a rug and drink Perrier and eat salad. And I occasionally chase the ball in their direction and meet Jerry before throwing it back. <laughs> <laughs> In comes Gillespie again, and uh, once more, Triscothic doesn't play a stroke. Oh, what an extraordinary day. And, uh, and this is the first frustration. I have afternoon tea with Jerry, and she's quite interested. Was she? Yeah, and Mick said she's taken quite a shine to you. Right. And I said, great. And he said, I'm having a little soiree back at my estate. You're, you're invited. And I thought, this is the night of my life. <laughs> that Hall, you know, Hall and, mm. Sank, uh, Hall and Jagger invited me yeah. back. Gillespie again, he's on his way, and uh, that's forced away by Triscothic. Lovely save there by War at backward point, prevents four. England remain 25 for one. However, 
in my way was the fact that I'd been invited to London with other Australian players for the Jubilee dinner, oh. which I could not knock back for a night with the Jaggers. So that was your big moment gone. That was, and that is the most frustrating time. But I'm pretty sure now life. that well, she's available again. I know, but I sensed this at the time that she was restless. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Most of us are on your company, Karen. You know, I mean, here's Gillespie, and oh, just Gothic definitely played at that one. The ball went past the outside edge, and uh, was taken there by Gilchrist. I mean, up in that box, there was the three of us. There was a millionaire horse breeder. There was a, a wealthy sex god mm. and Mick. 